Wire podcast. Today is May 11th, 2017. And what is there to talk about? I mean, the draft is over, the excitement's over. We're kind of in that uh, desert wasteland area. A little bit of fantasy news to cover here and there. So we decided here at Sleeper Wire to do something. We're going to talk about some interesting things today. We're going to talk about some NFL news real quick, but then we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes. Veteran running backs, where they landed, and how are they going to perform for your fantasy team today on the show. I got my dream team on. Mike and Hussein have joined me today. My name is Steve. Mike, how's your week, first of all? How you been doing? Uh, Not too bad, not too bad. Staying pretty busy down here in old Wyoming. How about you, bud? You live in Wyoming. What an interesting place to live. (laughs) <laughs> I know. I mean, interesting is one way to describe it. Is that big, <laughs> interesting? <laughs> is that considered a uh, big sky country, or is that Montana? That's that's mostly Montana, but we have it too. I mean, it's you. We don't have trees. We have just sagebrush and nothing for miles. Like we're wide open spaces. <laughs> so are you like? Are you you got to be like one of the number one top fantasy football players in the entire state? I'm guessing, right? <laughs> it, at least in this city, but that's, that's not saying much. I mean, I actually very competitive league here in this town, but uh, awesome, awesome. you got to understand, you've got nothing to do in this town, in this state. So everybody has an abundant amount of time just to focus on things like this. So oh. everybody can get fantasy football. <laughs> good. Okay. So there's a bike on every corner, apparently. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, that's good that we have you on the team. I, I didn't know that about uh, about where you lived. And Hussein, oh, old Wyoming. Who, yeah. <laughs> Hussein, you're you're in. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell the people where you live, but you live in on the Gulf Coast in Florida. How's fantasy football yeah. off season uh, there? Do people talk about fantasy it's... football, or are they into other things oh, during yeah. this time? No, I mean, uh, I mean, the people don't care, you know, but I mean, I, I do. And, you know, a couple of other people I run into do. So it's just definitely fun. You know, we just have to draft, of course, and run into uh, Jarvis Landry the other day, but I didn't really get to run into him. So I kind of saw him. So I didn't, you know, as I name drop a guy that I don't know that, <laughs> so, you know, aside from that, you know, that, that was cool. Does running into Jarvis Landry uh, increase his draft value for you at all now that you've seen him, like, no, get a good look at him no, in person? No. I mean, no. I, I believe in the guy. You know, he's he's good. So he, he he's, he's a good guy. He's a good I mean, guy. was he doing – okay, well, I guess the real question is, was he doing something related to um, football? Or was he, like, out golf carting around or, like – You know, um, he – I was – I was leaving like the Hard Rock, uh, the Seminole over here, the the casino, and uh, he had you know some really hot girl with him. <laughs> so I didn't even notice it was him at first. I just noticed <laughs> it was a really hot girl, and I was like, "Wow!" And <laughs> as soon as she got she gets in the car, I'm like, "Oh, who's this guy that she's with?" And I was like, "Okay, that's that's Jarvis Landry. Okay, that's that's Jarvis Landry. That makes sense." <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, that the, before I could get out and hey, sleeper wire, you know, you know, I wanted to you know get a little shout out, but it's too, too late. <laughs> Maybe next time, Jarvis, let's see you out there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> good to know he's uh, keeping good company these days. Let's talk about some NFL news. You go up, Michael Floyd. This just came up today. Signed with the Vikings. Boy, I don't know. Breaking news. It is breaking news, but I just don't know how much value fantasy wise. I mean. If you look at Michael Floyd's just raw, just raw, just raw metrics, just his height, his his weight, his ability, his skills, you would think he'd be a pretty good player, but he just hasn't seemed to really put it together. And now landing with the Vikings for next season, I believe it's a one year deal. Uh, I'm not sure that there's going to be a lot of fantasy value, even though he's still a young guy. Um, I'm curious if either one of you have agree with me on this or disagree with me on that. I 100% agree with you. I don't really uh, get very excited when his name gets brought up. I mean, he's got a couple of good games under his belt, but as far as a fantasy value, I just I don't think he ever has been. If he is one, it'll really surprise me. Yeah, I mean, like he he's had his shot. We've seen him on, you know, on two 
teams that, you know, could have been really prolific or were prolific offenses. And, you know, Carson Palmer. They were passing offenses, yeah. which is a good point. Right. So yeah. I, right. It's a good landing spot. This, not so much. You know, I'm more excited about, I guess, I'm not really excited about anyone. There. I mean, I'd be more excited about Adam Thielen be more excited about Stefan Diggs, but everyone knows about those guys. So there's just not enough guys, you know, at best, what is he going to be a wide receiver for at best? You know, yeah. so I mean, he's not really fantasy related, uh, relevant, you know, it's a slow news week. Well, but I mean, it's a name that people know and people recognize. So right. it's, right. it's something they'll notice in the draft, say, oh, I, I didn't even know what team he was on. And they'll see him and think, yeah, maybe he'd be the standout player in that offense. But I, I wouldn't reach for him. Uh, maybe, maybe late in the draft, but like, like you said, Hussein, I'm looking at at Thielen and Diggs before I'm looking at at Michael Floyd. I think. Yeah, they even got the tight end there, you know. So, you, you, so Rudolph is between those three, and then you factor in if they start to work in, you know, uh, uh, you know, Murray or Cooker, then you know now you're you're looking at an offense that really doesn't possibly have room for him unless he just really emerges as the guy that maybe we all thought he was going to be, but right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to buy. Uh, a little bit of Jets news. Uh, Robbie Anderson, wide receiver, got in a little bit of trouble at a music festival. Um, my boy. Is that, I knew. I knew that was your boy. I knew that was your boy. That was my boy. He and, hurt me though. Week, uh, and, and he, he hurt me the last week of the well, uh, uh, season. Yeah, I mean, we hope that we hope that uh, you know he's he's good because he does stand to increase his workload this year. I, I would assume. I don't know if he's a guy you would start, but he's definitely one of those guys that right. should be on your watch list this year, I think, right? DFS guy, you know, you may want to play him in daily, you know, a couple of games, you know, just a low market guy, you know, you're not spending much money on him. What do you what do you um, particularly like about him though, Hussein? Like what what about him catches your eye in terms of like that's interesting? I like, an interesting I like the way he when he catches the ball. I was looking at film at him and I like when he catches the ball. He looks impressive you know so when he does catch the ball the problem was he he was targeted a lot but it was just bad you know he was being overthrown a lot uh so if you look at his at his catch rate it's it's really low so he doesn't look impressive if you just look at his numbers but if you look at his film you watch him film you watch him like turning around catching the balls it it looks he looks good on film so i'm just going by the eye test I think Robbie Anderson is really good by the eye test, but I just don't think the Jets have it, you know, together. You know, um, he, he'd be better, you know, in a better offense, you know, but uh, I, I think. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, I think there's a talent there. You know, he's probably you know, between him and, and Anunua. If Decker comes back, you know, I mean, he's got a chance to be somewhat relevant. Someone relevant. Another guy that might get some uh, more relevance this year, Bilal Powell. They're talking about him becoming the lead back for the Jets. Uh, that, I think, more people could probably get behind. Bilal Powell seems to be the kind of guy who could be a lead back. Um, he's never really had the chance to do that. He's been either paired up with with uh, Chris Ivory at some point, or he was paired up with Matt Forte. Uh, Mike, do you think Bilal Powell is a good running back? Will he be able to take this job and, in other words, shove it like down, <laughs> in, like into the end zone, like into fantasy relevance? I really, you know, I mean, this guy got me my championship last year, got me to my championship, and then he almost cost me the championship. All right. so <laughs> David Johnson, same week, right? He got. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. And Jeez. so, luckily, luckily, I got lucky, and I still won, but. I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan. I think he's going to do great next year. I think he'll be as long as they give him that lead role, which it kind of astounded me that he wasn't ever the lead role. I mean, you got Forte right. there, who I really like. You know, I like Forte a lot, but I just he's old. You know, he's an old back. He's injury prone. Uh, I don't. I mean, he comes in, he'll have that five touchdown game, and then everybody will freak out about Forte. But I just I'm a big Bill Powell believer. I think he'll be good. I think he'll be a good guy to grab, and I think you're going to probably have to grab him fairly early next year because I think he's going to have some hype around him too. Who else is over there in New in New York? I mean, yeah. who else? You, you were just saying it. Anunwa, Robbie Anderson, who <laughs> I thought he was pretty decent, but I mean, the guy right. had like 30 targets a game, so right, give right. anybody that kind of a workload. Right. I mean, a, a running back workload, they're going to look great, you know. So I don't know. To me, I think Bilal Plow's the only gem in that entire offense yeah he's the one you want 
out of this yeah. whole mess of a thing. He's been the most consistent. You know, the, you know his his first year he had seventy attempts, three hundred three. Uh, Sorry, 313 uh, yards, and he had two touchdowns uh, they caught, and, and he ran one in. And you extrapolate that the next year, uh, he had 131 attempts, 722 yards, 5.5 yard, you know, the average. For, so the carry, he had three, he rushed for three, and he caught two. So he that's consistency there. Um, he could break out this year. He could really break out this year. He could be that Forte Bilal Powell RB1. I mean, that's what uh, Matt Forte was um, at the beginning of the season. Uh, Forte's older. You know, I mean, Bilal Powell's 28. He's not the youngest guy, but he's 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 younger. He's he should have fresher legs. I mean, he doesn't have nowhere near that amount of workload on him. So I, I definitely like uh, Bilal Powell. He has a ton of promise in PPR. Um, and overall, I think he can just, you know, uh, get you about, you know, maybe about uh, 10 touchdowns, maybe more to the season. Yeah, I agree. I think he's going to be a pretty good value in drafts and um, definitely somebody that you could you could sneak away in some of the later rounds, get some great value for. I did want to talk about this, Hussein, because this is your team. The Giants are talking about saying, OK, Paul Perkins is going to be our starter. Now, you you follow the Giants. You love the Giants. So is he going to be able to do it? Is Paul Perkins going to keep that job? Uh, you know, I'm I'm still hoping that Legarrette Blunt doesn't sign and and we get Blunt because I I like I like Perkins, but I think he's the only back we have that we we, we need at least like two Perkins at least. And you know, and um, well, you know, I I, I do like the, the the running back, you know, that the, the the rookie running back that we did bring in as well. Uh, so those are probably the, the guys to watch. You know, the, the as far as everyone else, they they're pretty much all the same scat backs. You got Darkwa, uh, Shane, you know, Shane Vereen and and Drone, uh, Drone is pretty much. I feel like they're clones of of, of each other. <laughs> uh, so you know, it's they have pretty much the same backs, right? Um, across the board. So it, it's they're not very very exciting. So Paul Perkins, yeah, he's the most exciting of of the guys. Uh, they did come out and say, yeah, he's a starter. So that's nice to hear. I think they still got Bobby Rainey too. So they they've got so many backs. But uh, it's 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 a crowded backfield, right? Uh, so it's going to be one to continue to look at. You know, I'm not ready to to invest. You know, too many shares in in, in this guy. But I mean, you said you said their other guys are clones almost of each other. Does Perkins or the rookie have anything that stands out like? physically that you think they're different in a, in a way where they can provide something different than the Rainies and the well, Marines and uh, yeah I mean well yeah I think Perkins is definitely going to get the rushing work you know and Gallman's probably going to still <laughs> he's probably going to vulture so it, it's not something that 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 it's exciting I wish the Giants I say this about the Giants every year I wish they would get one guy the ball if if we did that obviously for fantasy everyone loves that you know, and it just seems like ever since Tom Coughlin left, they don't seem to care ab- about, you know, running the ball so much or sticking with one guy. And it's every week. It's a deep, it's a different guy. And you look, oh, Orlin Starkway, he, he looks a little good. And then the next week they give him 10 carries, you know, he, he gets maybe right. 80 yards or something. Next week they, they don't give him any. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like Wayne Gallman. I, w- I wish they would give one guy the ball. All right. You mentioned Coughlin. Mike, I want to get your take on this because Coughlin now works with Jacksonville. So with them drafting Leonard Fournette, I hear a lot of people talking about he might get the full-time gig. Ivory and TJ Yeldon hadn't seemed to really separate each other or impress either way. So, Mike, when you're drafting, based on the Coughlin effect, are you valuing Leonard Fournette as a uh, as a running back one or two this year? Uh, you know, I would have to probably go to two just because I don't know that that offensive line has made a lot of changes. That's a pretty weak offensive line at the end of the day. Uh, to be completely honest, I really didn't care for Fournette's combine this year either. I didn't feel like he was had that pop or that razzle-dazzle that I look for when I'm looking at running backs. Uh, like Ezekiel Elliott, for instance, when I saw him last year, it was just I was just mesmerized. I mean, the guy was amazing. He saw the razzle dazzle, and I'm just not really. I don't get that out of Fournette, you know. Like I just don't. 
I, I feel like RB2 or less, and I might be wrong. I do feel like he'll probably get that starting role, and he'll get the number one spot in that backfield, but for what that's ever worth, you know, I don't think that that's a very productive backfield to begin with. All right, I want that coin, though. If the Coughlin effect picks up, uh, catches on, that I said it first. <laughs> If it, in fact, becomes a thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got the opportunity. You know, he's definitely got the opportunity. So we'll have to see. You know, I'm, I'm, I am lean a little bit more um, with, with, you know, with Michael. And it's just because I'm, I never like to buy too much into a rookie. Um, but, yeah, he's got, he's got RB1 potential based off his opportunity. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'm not ready to give him, give him that. I don't know. Last guy, we'll talk about another running back here, Amir Abdullah. Um, again, the Alliance GM is saying that Amir Abdullah will be the team starter. Again, like it's it's okay. We're calling the guy the starter. We're not necessarily saying that we're going to commit to him for all three downs or all four downs for the entire year. So it's a nice little vote of confidence for some of these players, especially some of these running backs. But I think what we're what we're trying to point out in terms of fantasy, these guys, particularly Abdullah and Perkins, for that matter, have a lot of other running backs around them that can sap their fantasy value. Even though they might be the starter, they might be not be a starter for you in fantasy. Do you guys feel differently about Abdullah after hearing this out, or, I mean, is he pretty much the same as he was last year? I don't think he's the same as he was last year. I, I'm actually kind of excited about this news because I feel like Detroit's going to have to do a little bit of run and I think they're going to actually be a competitive football team this year if they can line that defense out that defense had a lot of really good games and they had a really a lot of really bad games last year and they kind of addressed that in the draft and then they also they're going to have a lot of returning players and I, I liked Abdullah two years ago I'm also a Nebraska fan I got to throw that out there real quick I've always <laughs> been an Abdullah fan so I watched him in college. I watched him a lot, and I, I don't know. I have high expectations for him, and I think he's better than Zach Zenner. <laughs> a little dig there. But. No, no, yeah. I mean, it's, it's Zach Zenner's. He's he's a great preseason guy. He's a preseason god. Right. So that that's that's that was some of my um, high butt against. You know, he, who was he playing against? So it was fun to talk about Zach Zenner. I was happy to see. Him get an opportunity and score a couple touchdowns. Yeah, he didn't get a ton of yards, but he also didn't get fed the ball a lot. So I still think that he's a good uh, back to have there. You know, they didn't invest in, you know, did, I don't believe they drafted a guy. So that's that's good news for for both guys, I think. Um, and you know what? If Zinner turns out to be like, you know, a top 10 guy, who knows? <laughs> like, <I'm just> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got to get him on the show one time since I. I, I told him so, uh, so, so, you know, so loudly. There you go. Called him a preseason god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think he's actually calling in right now. Uh, let me – oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, we, we don't have time for it today. We've got other things no, to cover. Okay. I, well, I will get no. you on next time, Zach. But, uh, okay, well, that's interesting because I wasn't too excited about this news. I mean, t- to me, this news doesn't change a lot of my opinion. This, this is just news. It's just right. talk. But, um, but, but Mike, maybe you got me looking at uh, Abdullah a little bit more closely here before I draft this season. Wow, it's just all running back news today. There's a couple more we want to talk about real quick. Oziah, uh, Oziah. Isaiah Crowell <laughs> signed a one-year deal with the Browns. And a lot of us and a lot of other people have been pretty excited about Isaiah Crowell this coming year in fantasy. Uh, does it concern you at all that it's just a one-year deal, or is that just because he's a running back and really don't know how long he's going to last? Browns doing the Browns stuff. I'd lock him up if I was them, but you know, it just be, it just means he's going to return, and you know, he's got something more to play for. I like Isaiah Crowell more more than a lot of guys. You know, I like him more than Marshawn, so so I I don't know. You know, I I like the news. Mike, you might have said before that you had a you had a little you had a little you fancied uh, Duke Johnson a little bit, and you thought always thought he would be more involved, or he had the abilities to be more involved. So, give me your take on this one. Right. See, now I I thought he was going to be, but they ne- that never seemed to pan out, and I kind of got on board the Isaiah Crowell bandwagon myself. Seeing that, I, I just I don't know why you'd only sign him to one year. I mean, right. the guy fits in with that offense so good, 
he runs so well for them. I don't know why they don't say he's our starter for starters. Like, I mean, he's always <laughs> right. at this time, you know. And I, it just baffles me. He, the whole Isaiah Crowell thing, it actually kind of excites me. Put him on a team that will appreciate him and use him the whole entire season and see what he can do. Yeah, give him a full workload. Yeah, exactly. All right, speaking of let's see what he can do, James Winston has been talking up his teammate, Doug Martin. He said he looks incredible. The way he's bursting and just being so explosive shows uh, is showing how well he's playing this preseason, or, or how he's he's prepared in the off season, I should say. Um, and and the general manager was talking talking up Doug Martin too. Right, so, right. yeah, I mean, you, you got to take it worth a, worth a little bit of value here when people yeah. are saying he looks good. Yeah, I I think you have to. Um, he, Doug Martin doesn't need praise. You know, like he's not like a you know a rookie guy that they don't have any other guys and they're just trying to boost up his confidence so he's you know good and you know Doug Martin you know I think he's one of those guys we we're about to talk about veteran running backs he's getting he's getting there as far as a veteran running back I think he's got a lot of proof this year and he's been one of those guys that had a bad year bounce back bad year bounce back. So this could be a huge bounce back here for him if he's looking this good and he does have that potential. It's not like we haven't seen the muscle hands, hamster do it. So kind of buying in, in a little bit, you know, and I'm, I don't like to do that too much. But this is, you know, I don't see why to continue. And I, I, I guess the quarterback, when the quarterback talks about it, it means a little bit more to me because the quarterback doesn't have to. You know, he, he definitely doesn't have to. It's a ton of, I mean, but then again, who knows? It's probably a question posed to him. What do we know? Is it? Did he come out and just offer this advice, or was it that I'm not was sure. opposed to him? That I'm not yeah. sure. So I mean, it could be that too. So, but if he's just coming out talking about it, but regardless, you know, I I think it's something to look at. It definitely makes me a little bit more confident about drafting Doug Martin this year. I I personally can't. I mean, I, I get it, man. The back and forth, good year, bad year, yo yo effect. But I can't. I can't count on that for fantasy. Like that's such a weird thing to say. Like, okay, he had a bad year, so now the next one has to be good. That's impossible for me to say and and live with. But I do like what you said about the quarterback endorsing him. But I also think it matters a little bit about the quarterback. Now, do you do you think Jameis Winston is the kind of quarterback who can really see like talent? Like, I think if 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 uh, like when Aaron Rodgers endorses a teammate, you can almost take that to the bank that that teammate is good. Like that guy's gonna have a good season or he's gonna play well. I think Aaron Rodgers recognizes talent, especially on his own team, right? Can we count on Jameis Winston at his young age to recognize Doug Martin's talent and like put a little bit of that into our calculations when we're drafting? I uh, I think we can. I just I don't know. I'm I I can fully say I am all in on Doug Martin this year, and I'm going to try to grab him on every single draft I possibly can. Where are we taking like, this guy this year, Mike? I'm thinking if I get, I'm going to be lucky if I can get him in the fourth or fifth round. Yeah, I that's think, what I'm thinking. That's what I'm I think. I think if you see, you're going to see him go more in the third, though. I yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, now with this news and the continue, I mean, soon we're going to start seeing videos. We're going to start seeing OTAs. And mind you, these guys are on hard knocks, so we're going to see it. It's true. You know, yeah, it's going to be a t- this guy might go as in the second round before before the beginning of the season, where people are going to see him on hard knocks and. Right. You know, we know what Hard Knocks does for guys. Uh, So, and that could be some of it. You know, cameras are there. (laughs) You know, guys don't want to look foolish in front of HBO. It's true. Yeah, because everybody, all their, the rest of the league probably watches that show. And I just think he's going to come out and run with purpose. I think he has a lot to prove with all his little antics last year, and I think he's going to come out full throttle. All right, let's talk about Full Throttle. I think this guy's name should, his nickname should be Full Throttle, but I, it hasn't caught on yet. Christine Michael. I mean, probably best player in the <laughs> NFL. Full Throttle. Christine Michael visited the Patriots. I don't know if it was just for a, Whoa. I don't know if it was just for a cup of, uh, of clam chowder or if it was to talk about <laughs> getting in that team and get to the Super Bowl, but, uh, <laughs> chowder. We had to mention it just in case because the yeah, Patriots we had to do it for Max. Well, the Patriots <laughs> they extended this this uh, May nine tender is what it's called to Legarrette Blunt. So basically, they they right. off they they offered him like one point one million. It's a confusing deal. Apparently, by doing this, the Patriots protect their their uh, their their compensatory pick, 
and will get one if LeGarrette signs with another team before July 22nd. If he doesn't sign before the 22nd, he can only negotiate with the Patriots through week 10 of the season. So it's it's kind of like a weird little, like, we kind of yeah. have you, but we kind of don't. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to... It, it's tough. Make sense of this, because him. the Patriots just signed Gillisley. They have Burkhead. Right. They have White. Right. They have Lewis. What are they doing? They may have Michael. So are they going for six running backs? They're playing. Like, they're playing. Bill Bill Belichick is finally buying in, and he's like, you know what? You guys playing fantasy football? I'm joining in. I want all the running backs. I'm going to hoard all the running backs, right. and none of you guys will have none. And you know, I'm going to trade Gillisley back to the Bills. Maybe <laughs> like and give me your pick. Right. You never. Who knows? You know that guy is a genius. You know, I don't like the Patriots, but Belichick is he's a genius. I got to respect that guy. Uh, I, I feel bad for uh, Blunt here because I think that he probably would have – I think I read somewhere that he probably would have signed somewhere. Like it was almost that they did this, like knowing that he was going to sign soon. <laughs> and just kind of like, you know, no, you're not going anywhere. Um, and then who knows? Christine Michael might be brought in. Then they got Michael, Gillisley, and and Blunt to possibly look at. And who knows? I mean, obviously they got they gave Gillisley the the most money. Um, but if whoever is the starter, you know, Blunt was was RB one. Whoever is the starter, if, this is why you never you never draft a, a yeah. Patriot because. But if you do, you, if you ended up with 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 Blunt last year, you probably at least made it to the to, you know to the big game. Yeah, no, he close. was a fantastic, so. but I mean, nobody drafted him thinking or expecting the kind of no. year he was going to have. So like you just said, no. it's hard to draft him. I think actually, I think I figured it out, guys. I think the reason Christine Michael was there, because I think they had LeGarrette Blunt in the office. They said, here's the deal. They put it on the table. They pushed it in front of him. As he's reading it, <laughs> they had Christine Michael walk by the door. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah, oh, like, man. oh, just in case you don't, si- you you yes. might want to sign it because yes. we got other guys coming in to <laughs> yes. visits right now. So it's a little like a leverage move, I think. A hundred percent, I I agree a total a hundred percent. I think that's exactly what they did, and again, a smart move. You know, they're the guy doesn't sleep. You know, he's on the job as soon as he wins the Super Bowl. You know, and I I hate saying such nice things about him. <laughs> you know it's true. So you know Belichick, yeah, kudos to that guy. They're going to have a stable of 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 running backs, and people are going to be needing probably running backs. They're going to get some picks. So oh, and uh, Blaine Gabbert just signed a uh, one year deal with the Cardinals. I don't know if I mean I guess we're excited about. Are we excited about Blaine Gabbert as a backup? Uh, to Carson Palmer. So in worst case scenario, you run Carson Palmer in fantasy as your your quarterback, he gets hurt or something horrible happens. Um, is Blaine Gabbert a guy that you would consider starting with that offense? More so than I would Stanton. I can say yeah. that Stanton was just dreadful. I mean, okay. He was right. terrible to watch. And I know I picked up Carson yeah. Palmer in a couple leagues last year. And uh, he, he just isn't that good. And Gabbert, he has – a little bit more to be excited about. I think not too much more, but I think on Arizona, I think that David Johnson can make any quarterback look good. And then right. uh, John Brown is fast as lightning. And I think he's going to have a really good season this year too. A really big comeback year. But uh, yeah, I think I'd, I'd play him. I would play him. Uh, well, yeah. We know he got benched, you know, for Kaepernick. So, but at the same time, they, I think they still wanted to see what was left from Kaepernick, you know, before they let him go. So, Oh, that was just um, such a mess last year, though. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, but I, I agree. I think he he's going to compete with Drew, but yeah, I mean, they're going to still see. You know, they they didn't get a uh, they didn't get Mahomes. You know, uh, so this is this is the, this is their uh, shiny you know <laughs> consolation prize. Yeah. You know, Blaine Gabbard. It's a nice little backup toy. And you you made yeah. a good point though. Last year was really a, a cluster F for the 49ers. <laughs> right. And I don't think you can look at the guy and say, uh, no. okay, we we know no. what he was what he's capable of in that mess. So this right. is a more stable situation. Um should he get an opportunity, I think he might he might prove to be, you know, decent, maybe usable for fantasy for a week or two. Well, somehow guys, we take we take off-season middle of no, middle of nowhere news and 
and stretch it into 30 minutes. I don't know how we do it. <laughs> but the, the show, let's get on to it's what we... There. Uh, it's out there. Yeah, we will talk about it. So let's get on to what we want to talk about today is these veteran running backs, where they landed, and what are they going to do for your fantasy team. All right, we're going to start with the most recent landing spot. Jamal Charles headed to the Broncos. Mike, you're a Denver guy. I want to get your take first on this. Do you like Jamal Charles in Denver? Uh, what are the factors that are weighing on your mind in terms of is he going to be fantasy relevant or is he just going to be you know NFL relevant? You know, I Googled him the other day just to watch him on YouTube, just to kind of feel it out. You know, and once I scrolled down about 300 things and got past his knee blowing out, I went to actually got to some of his old highlights. And I remember how just devastatingly powerful this guy was. I mean, he gets out of the box fast. He runs up the field fast. John Elway really doesn't gamble. I mean, he only takes surefire shots and he makes them champions and I mean, look what he did with Peyton Manning. There's all the question marks around the neck. And is he going to be able to throw again? And look what he did that year. It was just amazing. So I think he can take a starting role if he can stay healthy, be the same Jamal Charles, or even 75% of the Jamal Charles, to me, is better than C.J. Anderson. Like, And I like C.J. Anderson, too. I'm not going getting down on him at all. I just I like Jamal Charles. I've always been a fan. I've always hated him because he was a chief. I, I, I'm excited to see him as a Bronco, Mike. Do you, do you want do you want them to use him in a full workload capacity? I, I would think that would be the only reason you would take him. I mean, to have him like as a goal line back or something like that. I just you didn't really ever get to the goal line very much last year as a Denver Bronco. It just never happened as much as a guy would like it to. I don't see much opportunity there. I see him being more of an end to end runner. Hmm. See, I mean, with I, if I'm going to be excited about Jamal Charles, and I'm not very close to the Denver Broncos, so I'm just, you know, I probably don't watch him very much, other than, you know, whenever I catch him on Red Zone or something like that. But uh, if there's a guy I really like, I look back at his plays. But I don't know. I, I, I want to buy into. I, I think out of all the veteran guys, and I'm not really high on this guy. That I think Lynch is probably the most exciting, and and I mean, it's just because I don't. I, I don't want them to give him a full workload. I think they if they use him the same way I thought that they uh, that the, the Dolphins would, would should have used uh, Arian Foster just as a scat bag, just passing and pass, 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 just use him as, as that, you know. And I thought that that would be a, a, a great job for him. I think anything more, he's going to break down. But I hope you're right. You know, I would love to see a bounce back for Jamal Charles. That'd be huge, you know. I mean, he's one of those star backs that, you know, and – if he can do it, you know, I I wouldn't want to, you know, bet against him too much because he is a uh, was a stud athlete, you know, a, in everything. He ran track, everything. The guy was just a, a complete athlete. But I don't know. I don't know if he's got anything left in his knees. I I wish they would use him kind of just as a scat back just because I, I want to see him throughout the season. Yeah, I, I think uh, for me the, the major issue is the health. Like that's what held him back from recovering completely last year. And if he could be fully healthy, he might be really interesting. But I, I don't know if I'd be willing to spend a high draft pick on him or not. If Jamal Charles joined, joined the Giants, I would probably have maybe, I don't know, maybe because I'm not so much of a homer, but you know, and not to say that Mike is a homer because I don't know if he is or not, but I might have better things to say. About him, you know what I mean? Like, I, it, depending on where he goes, if 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 you're a fan, I think you're going to be more excited about because he's still Jamal Charles. See, and when it comes to fantasy, I there is no home team. I've even caught myself good, good, rooting good, against good. the Broncos. So <laughs> it's it's good. only it's only the situation and the powerful person that I remember Jamal Charles being, right? And just the fact that he took himself out of the game last year because he still didn't feel a hundred percent. But now he's saying he feels 100% and he's ready to go. To me, I'm just excited. Okay. All right. I like that. All right. I'm going to have to look at it closer. Again, Mike, you're, ma- you're making me <laughs> you're think. So God damn it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm set in my ways and you're screwing it, uh, screwing it all up. <laughs> That's all what right. I do. All right. Let, let's move on. Adrian Peterson has joined a new team. Now, this is, this is a weird one because now he's playing in New Orleans for the Saints. So – what the hell are we supposed to do with Mark Ingram this year? Now that Adrian Peterson's also on the depth chart. Send him emails and figure out why Sean Payton hates him so much. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's about the only thing I can think of. I cannot believe 
they signed Adrian Peterson, and I can't believe that that's not Mark Ingram's backfield. I'm a, well, I'm a Mark Ingram believer. They said, I mean, they said, you know, it's still his his backfield. You know, I mean, but it's it's crazy because, yeah, if I'm if 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 I'm him, I'm feeling a little bit nervous because you bring in a guy that's older than me that that can do as uh, as good of a job, if not the better job, potentially in in in, in Adrian Peterson, and then you bring in a guy that could possibly eventually take over, you know, and and Alvin Kamara. So. I don't know. I mean, like, either way, you're not loving this if you're Mark Ingram. This isn't good for your confidence. But I think Mark Ingram might be one of those chip-on-the-shoulder type guys. So who knows? I like Mike, uh, um, Mark Ingram still. I, I still like him. I know a lot of people don't like him. We just had a uh, Jake Sealy on the show. He, he kind of faded him a little bit. I still like Mark Ingram. Uh, I would just cuff him, you know, if I yeah. feel a little bit. I don't think the Saints are one of those type of guys, uh, uh, teams that – you know, mixing the running backs too much. I know they did a little bit last year with Tim Hightower, but even if they do that, Hightower being Peterson um, and Mark Ingram being Mark Ingram, he's still a, a very good running back. Right. And and Hightower had some fantasy value last year, and right? he did yeah, he, the he did. year previous as well. So with, uh, with Peterson as a backup, if he proves to stay healthy and he is in that Hightower role, um, I, I think you might be able to get a little fantasy value for him. Pre- NFL draft mock drafts, I should make this clear, had Peterson going very, very early. I don't see him going right. before the maybe eighth or ninth round at this point. I, I couldn't see it happen. Uh, he's going to be, like you say, he's going to yeah. be in a handcuff handcuff territory. Yeah, I, I see him as at best a back in three. Yeah, yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah, me too. Same All here. Right. Um, and you know, I w- I'm just curious. There might be something to playing with Drew Brees that might, I don't know, reignite a, a competitive spark or a desire to win. Not that he's lost any, I, I mean, I don't know the guy personally, but but playing with a quarterback like Drew Brees, playing with the, with the legend of the game like that, maybe that'll inspire a, Adrian Peterson to just be really special this year. It might be something to put in, put in your uh, league mate's ears if you want to convince them to draft him a little bit earlier than you want to. Yeah, it's something to you know try to throw people off. You know, then you got murmurs if if you're drafting really early, and you got rumors like Mark Ingram possibly getting traded for Jason Kelsey. You know, you got that stuff going on. So I, even though it's probably nothing, you know, but I don't could imagine why people are drafting early. But there are some people I know on Sleeper Five was early. Uh, oh, I had drafted already, and yeah, you know, I'm like, okay, Jesus, it's kind of early, but wow, that is early. <laughs> That is early. All right. Well, let's talk about the guy that uh, we've talked about a couple of times. We had a really good conversation with him, about him, I should say, with Jake Celia uh, last week. Uh, Marshawn Lynch down with the Oakland Raiders. Nick, our our normal host, is really high on him, loves the offensive line in Oakland. Hussein, you've been a little bit um, less enthusiastic, but uh, yep. Jake, Jake seemed to also be very enthusiastic about Marshawn Lynch, and I think it also had to do with the offensive line, which – which is pretty good, apparently. Mike, you haven't weighed in on this topic yet, so give me your take on Marshawn Lynch and what his value is in Oakland. Um, you know, in I'm not a hometown favoritist. Like I gotta state that first because we are now talking about the arch enemy of the Broncos, the Raiders. <laughs> right. Like I like the fact that Marshawn Lynch is going. I mean, that's an amazing offensive line. It's just, I mean, the guy's been retired for a year. And um, the last couple of years, he just didn't really do anything that impressed me. And when he retired, I just remember the thought going through my head is, yeah, he's due to retire. It's time. You know, he, he had a good run and he's out. So I just, I don't, I don't see that. And I mean, maybe it is, he really wanted to play in Ra- Oakland. He really wanted to be a Raider. Maybe he has that spark. And if he comes back to even half of what he was, then grab that guy. You know, you're going to want him on your fantasy team because he's going to have a lot of action. He's going to get a lot of productivity. He's going to have a lot of opportunity on that team. But I just, I don't know. I just didn't, the end of his career just seemed lackluster to me. He didn't end on a high note, I guess. Right, right. Well, okay, it's obvious to me that this is going to be like one of those players that, People are completely polarized on. So okay, let me get, let me get, let me, let me try to, let me try to figure this out for the listeners here. Is there anything that either one of you 
could look at or see in the preseason or factor into your overall drafting strategy that would make you say, okay, I'm willing to take the risk on Marshawn Lynch early. What 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 would be like? What would be that factor? What would be that thing that you see that was that would change your mind if you're not excited about him? If he has that cut and carry like he used to, the way he could just right. slice through that line, and then if he got hit, he could just pick you up and take you ten yards with him. You know, take two or three guys to tackle him. So if I see multiple people trying to take him down, for instance, or if he's breaking tackles. I mean, if he's just going right down on the yeah. ground right away. I mean, these are things that I'll be looking for. Now, if he's able to carry people and cut like he used to, yeah, I'll be all in on him just as quick. Yeah, and I I just, I just – same thing, and I, I just don't know if we're going to see that. I'm just more on the fence thinking that he's, he's going to still be able to push some guys, but – it's going to be goal line, you know, like he's going to be able to push some guys and get a goal line touchdown, you know? So that's why, you know, a lot of people are, you know, uh, I know, um, you know, our, 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 our grand Puba Adam, you know, he was, uh, he threw up on a fantasy life app that, uh, you know, how was, I called Robert Turbin. <laughs> I, I called Marshall Liz Robert Turbin and that, that, that got an interesting reaction. And I was just like, look, man, I'm just saying that the line is going to be similar. You know, I'm not saying right. I'd rather have Robert Turbin. Obviously, I'd rather have Marshawn Lynch. But, you know, I just think the line, you know, from last year, if you didn't look at Robert Turbin's numbers, you know, I said this maybe three times already, but was, he had like 500 yards and eight touchdowns, 800, eight touchdowns. That's that's impressive. Right. He didn't give it to you the way he liked it. So I, I, I don't think Marshawn Lynch, you know, I, I'm still not going to buy into it until i see what what mike's saying you know we see some of those you know he's carrying guys multiple guys and he's going yards you know while he's carrying these guys and of course i mean come on i'm gonna buy into him being a one but projecting him a one right now no all right just i mean look i i'm uh I, you guys are intense fantasy players i'm a little bit more of a casual player i don't do this kind of like super duper research that y'all do but for the listeners out there who want to get into that, like, where would I look for this type of video? Like, where would I find it? If I want to see Mar- Marshawn Lynch in the preseason doing this stuff, what where, where do I go? Well, I mean, you you just stick to Twitter. I mean, you stick to Twitter, I would say. this Twitter's got the fastest pulse, you know, um, on this stuff. You stick to Twitter if you follow – you follow myself, you follow anyone with Sleeper Wire, if you follow anyone, you don't even have to follow myself, I don't want to plug myself, you follow any anyone, you can follow Jake Sealy, we, we, that we just had, any of these guys, these are guys are going to have the fastest pulse, uh, we're going to have the fastest pulse because it, it it's our job, right? you know, to, to stay kind of glued to this and give you this information before anyone else, uh, and these are slipped through the crack type of thing, so it's really early, you might find some news it seems like you know it may be relevant and stick in the back of your mind. It's it's a lot of time. We got what a hundred days left, a hundred and five days left, or something easily, like that until easily. football. Yeah, yeah, it's a while. Why do I know that number? Because <laughs> you have a special calendar on your wall and you know it. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, the, 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 well, there's one more guy we're going to talk about. I wouldn't. I don't know if people would consider him a veteran, veteran, but he has been playing football for a while. Eddie Lacy now at the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, we talked about him on a previous show. I think I was on that show because I was kind of I was kind of excited about him. I think he's going to yeah. win that job and and have it to himself because um, I don't think Rawls or uh, Procise can really take take over that whole thing. I think Lacey's going to have a pretty good workload. I think he's going to be fa- fantasy relevant. But um, I think what what I want to know is uh, Hussein and Mike. What are the concerns that you're hearing from other fantasy players about Eddie Lacey? Not not fitness, not weight, but like in terms of being a part of that team. <laughs> are you hearing any concerns that make you think, uh, I'm not so sure? I don't know if I can discuss Eddie Lacy without fat shaming him. Um, <laughs> I, 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 that's the <laughs> only thing I've heard about him. I mean, I, NDX, he, looks, man. he gets he gets fired on for his weight. Back. Yeah. That guy, yeah. Man, that's the only concern I hear about the guy is his weight. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, I was high on on Eddie Lacy last year, and I was down on on Doug Martin, and both guys did bad. And this year, I'm higher on Doug Martin than I am on on Eddie Lacy. Oh, for um, sure. Yeah, and I just 
I think Doug Martin's the more consistent guy at this point, um, just based off of work ethic alone. I mean, maybe the cameras mean something. Maybe they need hard knocks in there. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, maybe you know Seattle. They have hard knocks in Seattle, and I know I think he still has a lot to prove though. So I, I think he can still be valuable, but I'm not going to have him on many teams. He's going to have to fall to me. Um, probably like six round before I start thinking about him, and he's probably going to be gone before then. Yeah, I think so too. I think he, I think he's going to get scooped up a lot earlier than that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let's. Well, I mean, let's 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 uh, hypothesize here. Let's take these four guys, and we'll finish up with this. Let's take these four guys: Jamal Charles, Adrian Peterson, Charles. Lynch, and Lacey. And you're drafting right now before seeing any preseason stuff, any of that stuff. Give me an order of where, like, you know, who you like the most down to who you like the least. Mike, you go first. Um, you know, I'd have to say least because of the opportunity. Uh, just too many mouths to feed would have to be. Uh, well, gosh, that's tough because I don't really <laughs> like Eddie Lacy either. Yeah, so it's yeah. Awesome. My my tie in this tie for Eddie Lacy and Adrian Peterson. And then it's the exact opposite for Jamal Charles and Marshawn Lynch. Like, I'm very excited about both of those guys. I would probably, I, I would try to draft them, like I said, third, fourth round if I could. If they're in wow. there that late, I'd yeah. have to be watching. I don't think they will be, but if so I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust accordingly. If they start dropping in the second, I'll have to start thinking about how I'm gonna get them in my second and first round or late first round, maybe. Wow! So you have Charles and Lynch. And and then Lacey and uh, Peterson after that, correct. It's, uh, but it's yeah, bold. I I, bold. I agree with Mike. Um, I would say um the only I would reverse uh the last two. So I'm I'm a little higher on Peterson if he's going to get that that Tim Hightower role, and he's fresher. I like Peterson if he's going to be able to get that Tim Hightower role. I think he's going to have some some better value. But um, yeah, I think he could possibly. And you know what? Peterson is bold, but Peterson could possibly based off of, you know, my not, you know, it's this is not the line again. I'm going to say this again. <laughs> this is not the line. This is based off of Marshawn taking a break off. He's 31 years old. He hasn't played. And he didn't look that great last time. So I probably I'm going to say Peterson, Marshawn, uh, Charles and and then Lacey. Yeah. Peterson, Lynch, Charles. Lacey. But wow. I wouldn't draft them that way, though. I wouldn't draft them that way. I would still draft Marshawn before um, uh, Peterson, but I just think Peterson will probably have a better season. Well, why wouldn't you draft him first, then? Because of value. I, I think Marshawn's probably going to oh. have better value, and I think okay. that I could possibly take him. And I, even if I don't believe him, you may. So I'm going to just right. trade you to him and and get you know I'm and I'll still have Peterson on my team a couple rounds later. I, I'll reach for a guy that I think might be valuable, more valuable, and maybe like a round or two. But I won't I won't take him. I won't leap rounds ahead. So I think Peterson right now should be probably taken in a six round or so. You know, maybe later. You know, but even though he may not be there, that's just what I think. And Marshawn fourth, third round. You know, so I'd still probably rather have Marshawn around the fourth and then Peterson. A little later around the seventh or eighth, probably not going to be. A, neither of you guys are going to be on my team, but that's just how I think they'll finish. These these players are are going to be very interesting, right. hot topics. Sure. Hot topics come closer to the season, so that is uh, that's our take right now. It could change any given day. Uh, just sleeper bot just notified us that Tarje Sharp accused of assault oh, in a civil suit, in Nashville man. Is accusing Tarjay Sharp of beating him while teammate guard Sebastian Tritola served as a lookout. So we'll, we'll see what happens with Tarjay Sharp. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, we got to end on a on a bad news, but hey, on a note. But it is the off season, and what we're probably this is what maybe the second or third guy getting arrested. We're, we probably got yeah. thirty more. To hey, report. all the NFL, <laughs> all the hey. <laughs> But listen, just saying, just saying, playing the odds. NFL players, year. if you when you listen to our show, and we know you listen to our show, NFL players do like Jarvis Landry. Just find yourself a good looking girl to hang out with. That's don't get it. in trouble. That's it. Don't do the don't do the dope. Don't don't 
beat people up. Don't don't yell at people. Just go out and have a good time with a beautiful girl. This or a guy, whatever yeah. you're into. I don't care. But just go out and whatever have fun. you want. <laughs> just be be nice. Yeah. Just be nice because yeah. because we love. Gonna you hang guys. out with Michael Sam. You know, it's, it's whatever. Whatever. But we want we you to judge. We want you to have a fruitful season so that we can have fun in fantasy. It's all about us. We're For being sure. selfish. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're, we're the real ULBs, the ungrateful little bitches. <laughs> yeah, we are. Ones. I tell you what, though. <laughs> I tell you what. We are grateful to our fans and listeners. Uh, and, and as they know, as they know, we do this show for our friend Rob. We're trying to raise money uh, to help with his treatments because he has chronic Lyme disease. And it's it's hard, man. It's a really hard life he lives. Um, so any, any, any amount of donations you guys can give. If you like the show, you get any good advice from us. Or you listen, or you uh, in the season, you, you call into the mailbag. We give you instant advice on that uh, on the Sunday morning blitz. If we ever help you out, uh, we'd love for you to help us out. Just small donation, whatever you can do. GoFundMe.com forward slash Rob Jr. All the money we raise goes to Rob's treatments for his chronic Lyme disease, and um, we do appreciate that. We love that stuff, and that's why we do the show. All right, Hussein, Mike, thank you both for being here. Prophet Hoos, right? Is that what you are now? H U S. That is that is correct, sir. Prophet Hoos on Sleeperbot, also uh, Fantasy Life app, and uh, are you on, are you on Twitter as well? Twitter as well. You know, last year I had you guys all confused. I was like, you know what? Let me let me be a man of the people and just and make it easier. You know, and uh, you could just find me Prophet Hoos across the board. And Mike, you're Dr. Kane Twenty One. Dr. Kane 21 on Twitter. That is correct. And uh, I'm not available on those things very often, but um, but you can find me. <laughs> you can find me working on our website, sleeperwire.com. Uh, also at there fan, we at, go at sleeperwire show on Twitter at sleeperwire show on Facebook. And we'll be on next week with a very exciting show. We're gonna have the guy behind the scenes at the fantasy football calculator. We're gonna do a mock draft with the man, and then uh, we're gonna talk to him about how fantasy football calculator works. And all the metrics and stuff that they pull together. So if you're a metrics geek, you're going to love next week's show. All right, that's it. Thanks for listening, fans. God bless you. Have a great week.